Welcome everyone to the official podcast. This is episode 185 or 186. I can't quite remember. But Jackson just couldn't fucking stop Shut talking up. about one specific <laughs> thing he had on his mind. What was it, Jackson? Yeah, uh, The Last of Us 2. One of the greatest games ever made. Oh, could Jesus. be. Could be. What do we all think? That I game love is it. such a fucking stinker. What? Really? Well, I know. It's so, <laughs> Kai is the only person I've spoken to that said he loves it. Did you play it's the so first crazy. one? Did I what? Did you play the first game? No, I watched like years ago. I watched the cinematic cut of the first one just to get the story. So I didn't play the first. I'm not as, I suppose, as invested as the people who hate this one are. I kind of get so... That, yeah. I don't know how much of this say. I want to spoil now. So spoiler alert for well, the next... It, it's like a big part of the controversy or why people don't like it, Jackson. Kind of have to mention it, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's yes, kind of. I, like, I said spoiler alert. Okay, yeah, spoiler alerts so are like skip the next two minutes ish. So, I understand that your favorite NPC gets killed, and you were very emotionally invested in that. But other than that, and, and I guess that's the problem, right? That people have, or what else is there? No. Mm. How far are you, Kaya? Before we before we continue this discussion, how far are you? I am. finished it twice. Fuck me, I don't know. I don't even remember anymore. I'm still in Ellie's part. I've not yet switched okay. to Abby, I think, but I am all team Abby. I don't know what the fucking problem is that everyone has with her. I, I know everyone's calling her the fucking tranny golfer and they're all angry because she smashed Joel's head in, but I fucking love her, man. I love playing as Abby. Write me down on her team. I love her. I'll play her all day. In fact, I resent every yeah, second. I don't think Kyle, I don't think Kyle <laughs> likes the game. I think he's just got a fetish for Abby <laughs> or some something here, some attraction Ru to Abby. And write that's me down. You. As I resent every second that I have to play as Ellie and that I don't get to pound ass with Abby. I love her. Dude, she hits like a goddamn train, dude. She has like cinder blocks for hands. Have you seen those bear mittens? I love this shit. It's like, I feel like I'm playing Mike Tyson when I play her. I don't know. I don't think I've e ever even shut off a single round when I'm playing as her. I literally just punch everything and decimate zombies and people. About right. I love her, man. This is fun. I'm having fun with the game. It looks incredible it's the best game uh, best looking game i've ever seen visually best sounding one yeah, yeah. visually the game's beautiful yeah and i just i think the gameplay is fun too as long as i get to play mike tyson slash abby yeah so you cl I, I don't i think it's fair to say you're not like invested in a story it has nothing really to do with joel's death because he needed to die after the first mm -hmm. one the problem is they uh, literally make him just a background character and like a wet fart afterthought for the entire two hours that lead up to his death. So there's mm. no... My, my argument to that has been that he does have a story. It's the entire first game. There's yeah, nothing that's... much else that he could <laughs> do with that. Of, Last of Us is literally his entire franchise. That is his story. And they don't well, give him... more. A... Now it's only half his franchise. Yeah. Now which is... Well, a quarter. It, yeah. Him, and then, Ellie and Abby. And now 50 it's... 50 Abby. It's a revenge story. The most generic revenge is bad ever. What revenge is bad? Look at all these people that get hurt because revenge. Oh, they've been revenged. Jesus Christ! Do you feel that wind? It's the wind of revenge. It's nothing but like this generic, <laughs> fucking stupid, cliche yeah, revenge plot with with characters that have no depth at all. Like Kaya, as you, you progress, as you progress, Kaya, you're gonna like learn about these characters with one sentence, and then they're gonna die. Nine hours later, you're gonna get a flashback explaining who they were and why you should have cared that they're dead. It's the dumbest, oh, I, most amateurish shit I've ever seen. Dude, I fucking seen. couldn't care less, man. You guys know that one gif exactly, of Mike Tyson okay, where fair. he's like, he dodges, <laughs> he dodges like 10 uppercuts and 10 hooks. And then, you know, he's bobbing and weaving. And then he finally comes out from underneath and he fucking hits the, hits his opponent with a hook and knocks him out. That's how I feel when I play Abby, man. I really don't give a shit about all the, <laughs> oh, he, 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 this guy died. Oh, it's just all the fucking shit that I see in these in these controversial fair, Twitter threads of people being mad is like, oh, they, they had to go through a synagogue. Oh, the Jewish influence on this game. It's so apparent. What are you talking about? Just punch zombies, you fucking homo. What are you just, what is so complicated about <laughs> playing a dumb game? You're really overcomplicating okay, things. So, it's so like, you, you can't shoot the Torah. That's, that's one of the controversies that I saw. One of the criticism was, I couldn't shoot the Torah. Who gives a fuck? You guys are both on completely separate <laughs> levels. It feels like yeah, Kaya doesn't Jelly's care about the story at all. He's just complaining about, about the story. zombies. <laughs> yeah, well, that's I, well, that's kind of in line with Kaya's uh, thoughts with video games, though that they're just tools to have fun. 
I yeah, agree. No, it should be fun, like, and it's. I didn't yeah, no, I agree. I I feel like the Last of Us Two isn't necessarily a fun game. It's kind of like no, gritty and uh, like it, bro, it, even fun. even the core yeah, gameplay gets repet- it gets repetitive. The mm-hmm. ca- the gameplay itself gets very repetitive. Very much. Even so. if you're just constantly mashing uh, square on zombies I- as Abby, you can't you can't say that that would fulfill you for twenty hours of gameplay. <sighs> You'd be surprised. I mean, it's pretty fun. It's just the, the going around the people. And I love that the game is trying to make you play stealthily. Like, oh, the dogs can sniff you. And, you know, you leave a trail of your stink behind. Okay, yeah, sure. It can't really sniff me if I throw a fucking Molotov cocktail at a cannon. I'm just going to fucking shoot it in the face. What do you think is going to happen here? I'm a one man army of death. No one's going to sneak up on me. What do you think? I'm gonna hide? They should be hiding. The fucking zombies should be hiding, man. I just, I go through there like Rambo. I love this game. <laughs> and in my opinion, you know, with games and some movies too, it's it really depends highly on your attitude. Are you trying to have fun with it and like it? Or are you just right from the get-go going in with yeah. the mindset that it's gonna bore you? I, I actively try to enjoy it. I have a drink. I literally made popcorn too, by the way. I'm, I'm g- really getting into okay. making popcorn with different... Um, condiments and such and I sat down with my bowl of popcorn because I thought well everything I heard so far about this game is uh, just a movie you know I'm gonna be sitting here watching 50 minute cinematics and this and that and no you know literally two minutes into the game I was fucking smashing zombie skulls against the boss using Abby I love Abby I really I really did not expect you to like the game at all Mm. like that was probably the most surprising uh, out like input about the game after release. Like I could have predicted all of the general disdain for the game and everything. I could never have predicted that Kai would I'm be also, the biggest fan. I'm also pretty surprised considering the game is pretty much a movie, and since you don't really care about the story, it's just a lot of time where you're not slapping zombies with your bear claws. I figured mm-hmm. you'd be very bored. There was a lot of exploration, even in uh, like the beginning of Seattle. You're just kind of roaming around yeah, for a but, while. Yeah, but okay, so I like that, though. I, I enjoy that, for instance. It doesn't feel like... It, it isn't an open world or anything, but I like how much detail the team, whoever made it, oh, yeah. that they put in. Even the small insignificant Naughty areas, like I will go down a path that looks so handcraftedly beautiful Innocuous. visually. You know, yeah, it's it a looks, beautiful. I don't think anyone will looks, argue that the game's beautiful. But what I mean is, it looks so good. Uh, like usually, video games put only that much effort into the corridor and, and the level important, that you're supposed yeah, to go down. Sections. Yeah, mm-hmm. important sections. And I go down a section like that that I think is, oh, this must be the main path that I'm supposed to go down because look at that squirrel, look at those beautiful light shafts or whatever. And no, it turns out it's literally <laughs> just I got a pack of. I got a bottle of water out of it from scavenging that part, yeah. but it's... Or there's a note that expands on the environmental storytelling in that section. Like, it, it, that that aspect of the game does feel good to me. Agreed. Yeah, I, I like those other things. I don't know why all of a sudden humanity decided to communicate via leaving each other notes on tables, but yeah. I'll take it. I don't <laughs> that's, give a shit. That's what I said as well. <laughs> they just devolved in, like, communication. <laughs> Yeah, it's like... What were were they meant to do? Send Facebook Messenger posts to each other? What? I mean, if the world is going to end, it's going to end on Twitter, man. I I was expecting Ellie to (laughs) sit down at a computer at some point, maybe. I don't know. But yeah, I'm I'm having fun. uh, The the question I wanted to post to both of you is, do you think that the leaks before the game released has uh, kind of set up the the out, uh, outrage of the game like nah. do you think people are going in with that it, with that mindset that they're, they're ready they're primed to uh kind of hate it people because no. they already know the leaks i think a that's only people. for like the really diehard people that wanted to hate it from the get-go but if you just play yeah. the game you can hate it totally fine on your own oh yeah <laughs> yeah but uh, like the people the, like within the first hour of it releasing in australia and as soon as like the user reviews went up there were already like 15,000 user reviews review bombing it or whatever yeah, like that the, sounds... uh, there's definitely still that kind of yeah that's the internet though mm. that, even well, yeah. if there weren't any I, leaks, I know, but that's what exist. i'm asking do you think a lot of the outrage we see on the internet right now is because of that or do you think it's warranted not because of the leaks no i definitely think the, there's a lot not all of it's warranted like people are attacking everything in the game like even the visuals there are people like wow this game fucking looks like trash which is just outright wrong yeah it's but i, I see those too yeah but You're it's being just ridiculous overall really the, wait what yeah. 
People oh, yeah. are actually arguing the game looks it's, bad. This mm-hmm. game this is it's it one is, of the best looking games ever made. It's immaculate, but yet, you know, somebody will take one screenshot of one buggy animation or something or a little five second clip and say, Oh, look at how terrible this is. Dude, just come on. You're yeah. reaching now. It genuinely is everything set aside, everything like the story, whatever else you don't reaching. like. Reaching, you're down you're downright delusional. It, it genuinely is objectively the most impressive I, technologically game I that's released. I kept thinking, I can't believe this actually runs on a PlayStation 4. That's insane. Like, I've yeah, yeah. not seen a game <laughs> yeah. this good on the PlayStation yeah. 4. That is, this looks like a fucking Epic Games trailer for the PlayStation 5 or something. It's really beautiful. It sounds perfect. It really is. It sounds perfect. It has all of Can the accessibility you- options, all of the audio options too, which for those of you who care, that is, can be nice to be able to adjust the dynamic range of the sounds and everything. And the Can you think of a game that looks better? I, I'm sure it looks as good as it does because of like the design behind it, like p- the attention to detail. I can and such think really of games accentuates that, the details. I was gonna say I can think yeah. of games that look like more creative, like in terms of like their art direction, but it's Stylized. like as, yeah. But as far yeah. as like the actual visuals of this game go, I don't know. It's hard to think of something that really computes in that department. Yeah, maybe maybe a it's just modded a, PC game. Like some ray trace yeah, Minecraft or some shit, whatever the people do these days where everything looks GTI real. GTI photorealism. <laughs> yeah. But I don't, I don't know, man. It, like I, I went on Metacritic just for shits and giggles and I saw that obviously the critics all gave it a 100, which I wouldn't necessarily agree with. But the user score was like three yeah. or something. It's not a three, man. Again, you guys are rich. It's, not, it's three, not that it bad. Is- it's it it is Kaya. Like if you cared about the story, bro, this is actual fucking garbage, fucking trash. It, like even from the way it's structured, you'll like I said, you kill a character and then learn about them nine hours later when you've already forgotten who it even was because they didn't even bother to really give them a name. Some of the main- maybe you'll forget about it because you've you're fucking reading Twitch chat the entire time. Uh, fuck <laughs> no, man. I, there was an, a single detail that went over my head. I glued myself to this goddamn yeah, destructive I'm sure. narrative. I saw your gameplay. You fucking just you turned on the accessibility. Yes, I did. Around the entire. Oh my god, <laughs> that, that gameplay got so fucking tedious. There's an option to turn on right, prone right. equals invisibility, so I just turned that on and prone through all of the combat, so I didn't <laughs> have to fucking fuck? fight. I was like, you're cheating. Yeah. Oh, I thought yeah, he's genuinely like, cheating. I even had there's even a skip puzzle button. There's four puzzles in the whole game, and I got to skip two of them. You should you should have seen him at the beginning. Within the first two hours, I actually tuned into his stream. He looked like a Kotaku reviewer. Oh yeah, Cuphead. because I didn't. Yeah, because it was I didn't fucking ex- awful. Because I didn't explore your fucking two you houses for one bullet. No. You were at the door. You were trying to figure out how to get into a house, and you just had to look up. That's all you had to do. Yeah, to That's jump over the, the door, door but it's not worth it because there's nothing in the game worth collecting. The only there is this notes oh, that God. provide lore the to the only, characters you're killing. The only you're... good notes, and I found a lot of notes, the only good ones were the family that lived in the aquarium, Max and his dad and his brother. Why? That was the o- that was probably the best storyline in the whole fucking game. Why just... Okay, then why play it if you're just gonna god mode and clip through walls throughout the entire game? You're like, oh, I don't want to shoot people. The story. Dumb. You're just gonna go invisible I, and fly through. Because of the story. I wanted the story. Want the story. Oh my yeah, god, what's 100%. so important about the goddamn story? It's fucking zombies. Who gives a shit? Why, why, why like do you stories? expect so much death from oh a zombie god. game? Why do you keep what? doing that? Why do you do that all the time? It's like video <laughs> games kind of stories. The story was Jackson, supposed to be the best part. Okay, I guarantee you, Jackson, that I've cried more playing this game than you have. I care about the story. I get into it. There's some <laughs> Wait, you parts. cried? Yeah. I drink, I cry. Did you cry when, spoiler, Joel died? No. Why the fuck would he cry when Joel died? He doesn't even know who Joel is. (laughs) (laughs) Kaya came into this game and saw Joel twice. He has no fucking idea who Joel was. He doesn't know who that is. Yeah, dude, I get the flashbacks. The part where Ellie and him are in a dinosaur museum or something. That was was great. That That was sad. That should have came before his death where you build on the characters from the first fucking game and then it takes you to the fucking death scene. That would have made so much more sense. I don't think it really matters if it comes before or after. It absolutely does, because Joel's already dead and he didn't even play a role before his death. If you had started the game with those (laughs) flashbacks, where you have Ellie and Joel growing together still after the fucking finale of the first game, you still have that bonding and then you take that away, that's a lot more powerful for the players. Even if you haven't played the first fucking Last of Us, you see the relationship they had before he dies and you don't want to see him die, but because you see him die in the fucking background as a nobody, you don't care what the relationship was because it's too late, he's gone, you know the the outcome. only it's person so that thought Joel was a nobody. No, he, <laughs> okay, he was an actual fucking nobody in this fucking two hours Jesus before Christ. his death. I know who the no, hell he, he was. He still existed in the entire game before. Who yes, cares I about know the entire game? Before, you don't know Joel. It's a different game. 
<laughs> it's a different game now. Kaya, tell me Joel's favorite color. Uh, red, because he ran out of blood. I don't know. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> I know who Joel See? is. Yes, maybe I did not have the same yeah. emotional connection, but the thing is, I look, I get into these stories, but I understand that at the end of the day, all of them are going to die. Right? What? Well, I mean... <laughs> say, when you get into a movie <laughs> or a <laughs> TV <laughs> show... <laughs> okay, come on. When you, when you start, like, in a movie what? or a TV show or video game, you understand that, oh, this character that is kind of cool that I'm starting to emotionally feel something for, they're going to get shot in the head. Two episodes later. Is that why? You, is that why you don't like stories? Is because you just got this trust issue where you don't want to get it's not attached. A trust issue. They're gonna. <laughs> nah, I just don't eventually. care as much. Just what do you want me to do? Like get a fucking Joel plushie and hug it like a waifu pillow. Just what? oh, That's Joel, such a big I miss job. you so much. <laughs> It's an NPC. You can at least like the that be, needs to happen. You can at least like the character enough to like want them to not be killed off as a nobody. Give it a burial. Like a character so important <laughs> that just gets what? killed immediately without even having a role. It sounds like, like you're universe. afraid of admitting you like these characters. I like them enough that I am slaughtering my way through Sh Seattle or Chicago or wherever the fuck this takes place. I'm killing everything, man. Where it takes place. <laughs> How much more can I possibly care? <laughs> The name of the city shows up literally everywhere. <laughs> Who cares? Who cares? It's a post-apocalyptic town. That's Every street funny. looks the same. I mean, yeah. Well, that's, You're acting yeah, like the fucking right. well, names still matter in this, uh, in that time. Like, whatever. So have you finished it, Charlie? Yeah. I did. Yeah, I finished it last night. Jesus. How long is it? Yeah. It's, it's it's a twenty hour game. Yeah, it took me right around like eighteen hours, I think, to beat it, and that was even with my g game journalist mode enabled. So it, it's a long game. God, that's so sad. You don't even deserve yeah no. to play video games anymore. Oh, because yeah. I skipped the same tedious combat that I'd already played for ten fucking who hours. Who could have been Sean, there? You're the kind of guy who you know. So when the, when a horror game comes out, you you always have these guys going like, "Oh, amnesia isn't scary. Fucking soma isn't scary." Yeah, you know, it's because. People like Charlie, you know what you do is you play it in broad daylight in front of your window with the sun shining in your face and you have the game minimized in a window. That's how you play it. On yeah. your laptop speakers. You don't let, yourself, you well, don't let you... yourself get immersed. You didn't get immersed in The Last of Us. How did I... What? What you is didn't. it? How did you I didn't. not get immersed in The Last of Us? How you did you get immersed? The entire time. How, how is it you immersive can't. to be what? invisible when you're lying down? Oh my god, too. the gameplay is worthless, Kaya. You're gonna feel the same <laughs> after you played what four hours of the game. Wow, right I now? just realized you're on opposites. Charlie's like, only here for the story, not for I'm the like gameplay. Seven Kaya's hours in, man. The opposite. I'm having it fun. It is literally the same gameplay from 2012. They didn't change the formula. It is the same. <laughs> That's god not true. Damn. You can jump now. Yeah. Well, oh wow, that it, it is a game changer. <laughs> and go prone. That what is a game changer. Like three degrees of uh, you know movement. It is tired, tedious combat that's serviceable. It's not great. There was no fucking meaningful change in seven years. This seems like a game they threw together over the last eight months with a generic fucking boring storyline, and they just overhauled the same goddamn gameplay. What, what kind Terrible. of gameplay do you want? I, I'm not sure what, what you were missing. Yeah, I don't know, Obviously, I, if I you're don't not, know how what, else what you, they could revolutionize it. It's just, it doesn't need to be revolutionized, but they didn't even bother to change a single goddamn thing. They added one new enemy type. That is the only contribution to the gameplay, and you can jump and the dogs smell stink. How would stink. you know? You skipped all the encounters. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what enemies are there. What are you talking about? I, I literally <laughs> turned that on for the last, like, five hours. I did the other that's fucking... Not, that's, where five hours. The, that's where all the enemy types are. <laughs> <laughs> That's where they pulled out all their big guns. Dude, I don't, I don't know. You guys are hanging mm. up with characters dying and the game, but whatever, man. I'll kill That's them all. I, I'll kill Joel problem. myself. It's... I don't give a shit. If I wish they oh let me God. play Abby so I could punch him to death. <laughs> you know how much fun it has she nothing is. to do with Joel dying. It's the way they execute. Yeah, you do. Like, You're just sensitive. Shit. <laughs> You're too attached it's, to the first game. You no, need to move on. I'm too attached to actual storytelling. Kaya, do you know how many times they use the I'm pregnant card? They throw in three surprise pregnancies to make you feel something. <laughs> Literally three times they say she's pregnant. And Charlie. Oh my God, and she's pregnant. I'm give pregnant. Me, give me Abby and I'll fucking uppercut them in their bellies right now. I don't give a fuck. She is <laughs> fun. <laughs> I don't care about your pregnancy. Is what I'm saying. You it's get like in a, my fucking I, way, you die. You die like a fucking nobody dog. Nobody cares about the pregnancy is the point I'm making. It's badly written. 
It's the I'm pregnant card. Now feel bad. You I don't think Kaya cares, Charlie. You kill a dog and then they make you play <laughs> fetch with a dog five hours later. It's so stupid. It's so fucking stupid. You kill a dog and they're like, okay, now you have to play fetch with that dog five hours down the line. It's like, well, what's the point? You're just doing this to try and guilt trip to us. To build the bond. No, yeah. it, because yeah. the bond's already trip. fucking gone. You know what happens and you didn't have a choice. It's so, it's terrible. You can give I him the life he deserved while he was alive. But I like the little terrible. additions that they, uh, not additions, but you know, when the, when like a patrol has a dog and you kill the dog and then the guy comes across and he's like, Jesus Christ, my puppy. I was like, yeah, that's not what yeah, I'm that's talking so about. Next the, bitch. Like the contextual dialogue. Yeah, that, like that, they'll call cool. out to their fellow soldiers names when they go di- like missing. <laughs> so they're actual like real people. It's, yeah, it feels the attention like, to detail is genuinely I, impressive. The fucking articles that I read beforehand is like, oh, The Last of Us will make you feel bad for the people you kill because they all have pets and names. And, and No, it just makes it feel better. I feel good. It feels like killing real people. This is fun. This is awesome. Make them beg for mercy. I'm coming for you. All right. You're going to regret well, killing my stepdad. Fair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. <coughs> Uh, yeah. How about me undies, guys? <laughs> tell me, Sounds Jackson. good, Jackson. Tell us about it. <laughs> one of one of the greatest commodities in uh, in in the post apocalyptic world would be me undies, and that's because they're the most comfortable underwear money can buy. They're made from micro medal, uh, an irresistibly soft, sustainable fabric that encases your nether regions in cloud-like comfort. It's magically made from trees. Another reason to give them a hug. MeUndies are offered in a range of sizes from XL. Uh, XS, I mean, XS, extra small. So that's extra small to four times extra large. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know what American that's sizes are. X, X, Is X, that large? XL, that's, large. that's like from extra small to extra duck large. size. They're great yeah. underwear, man. I'm wearing them right now. I would get up and show you, but I don't want to get us in trouble on YouTube. But they are comfy and they are very airy too. I like that. I mean, it's very, what's it called? Breathable fabric, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. I even have a little fan mm-hmm. set up underneath my desk actually just to circulate more air there. It feels really great, really comfortable. Me comfy on these. Um, they have a great offer for our listeners, just for you guys. Fifteen percent off your first order and free shipping if you go to meundies.com/official. You know the deal by now. It's always slash official. Hundred percent satisfaction guarantee. And no, they don't want your used underwear back if you don't like them. Just you know, you get your money back. Don't worry about it. Okay. We all love them. Meundies.com/official. Super comfortable. Amen. You can have an undies membership, by the way, where every month they send you the softest underwear available, which I don't know why I need it, but I need it somehow. I don't know if this happens to you guys, but I constantly just, my underwear disappears, man. I don't know if there's the fucking under, underwear gnomes like yeah, from South that? Park, but sometimes they get ripped. Sometimes I just fucking lose them. I don't know what's happening. I always lose underwear. So this comes in actually really handy. I'm glad we have the sponsor. Meandies.com slash official. I always have clean underwear, in case of an apocalypse, especially. So, h- how large is four XL? I'm actually curious. You can't even imagine, Jackson. It is. Yeah, can you like live in that? Is it like <laughs> it's, enough to? It's like to two provide un- warmth during the winter or something. It's like, like two uh, umbrellas wide open, basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty big. How, how does anyone get that large? It's crazy. Oh, <laughs> what do you mean? It's almost America. easy. What the hell it is? Yeah. yeah, I guess it's still crazy to imagine that much fabric. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's possible at meundies.com slash official. <laughs> Go see how miracles are made. So that's like the one thing that breaks my immersion, obviously, because I care about the stories, though. How does Abby get that fucking buff in an apocalypse? Where where do you get your protein shake? Yeah, that's what breaks your immersion. (laughs) Yeah, what 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 do you mean? That's all there is to do probably in in the post apocalyptic world is to work out and get swole. Plus, you kind of have to if you're gonna survive. Isn't food scarce though? So in The Last of Us, it doesn't seem like there's really a food shortage. Like you remember? Well, I'm sure you've already went through it. Remember when that Manny steals two burritos? They're three burritos. They have like entire food courts and everything. So uh, they've definitely uh, figured out the ways. Well, definitely in settlements and stuff, they could grow stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, I it's still pretty modern. Like, they still have electricity and shit. They still, you know, well, even running water. Hmm. 
Well, Abby doesn't live in a settlement. She's like on a, some sort of a quest. So don't spoil it for me, by the way. But she seems oh, to be yeah. just, you know, a vagabond traveling yeah. the land. I suppose she, I guess you can like hunt <laughs> deer and shit and eat those. The Joe Rogan Yeah, she diet. doesn't need to do that. Why? I'm surprised she doesn't just eat humans <laughs> or her victims, zombies. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> Good fuck. <laughs> it would be fucking cool if they just revealed to me at the end that Abby was a zombie all along. It, it, it just had this self-image of being a fucking woman or something. I don't... I wonder if I can punch deer if I run fast enough faster. You'd have to be real fucking quick. Oh, well. Okay, well, Charlie, I guess you and I, we, we don't see eye to eye uh, about this <laughs> not, game. Not on this fucking thing. <laughs> not at all man it's it is dog shit i i really cared about the the story in the universe and this is truly a disaster in that regard what if okay what if i described the game to you the same way i described it to jackson just the day before it's basically punch out on steroids to me <laughs> I, i'd respect you, i respect that as long as you're not trying to argue the story is good or well written I, I was just about to say kaya sounds like he's still genuinely enjoying the story as well it's like a mindless like popcorn it. piece, right, Kai? Like, you're not really, like, stopping and thinking, right? It's just like, what? hey, this is kind of goofy. Is it Why does cool? he have to stop and think about it? Because well, that's think the whole point of the fucking last of us story. What's so bad about that? Yeah, it is kind of a mindless popcorn story. I like that. I hey, enjoy... Thank you. When I try to enjoy and something, man, I, I just... I, I don't try to go for the obviously bad parts. Like, when I play Life is Strange, it's, you know, I can still get into it. Yeah, it's cringy. Yeah, it's dumb. Yeah, it's basically borderline Riverdale, but yeah, it can be fun. Yeah, and I have no problem with that. Yeah, 100%. I totally find that respectable. There's nothing wrong with just being like, yeah, the game's kind of just a mindless story, and I'm fine with that. There's nothing wrong there. It's just when people argue that it actually is like on par with the first Last of Us story or anything more than like a mindless fun story, is, that's where I just completely disagree. It's a massive step down there. Yeah, well... You'd say that as a cheater. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got to, at that point, you have to accuse everyone who used that as a cheating. That's every game journalist out there. Speaking mm -hmm. of... when we, we do give them shit for doing that, too. Speaking now of, you guys, turn. we now have to issue another apology after last week's apology to Doug for calling him a redneck. I will do we, it. we now have to issue an apology to Billy Mitchell because his Pac-Man and Donkey Kong Guinness World Records have been We're reinstated. reinstated. Yes. Uh, so wait, he didn't cheat? No, he did cheat. He, 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 <laughs> what, that just, he intimidated them into giving him their records, <laughs> records back? I don't know. Well, the Guinness World what Records... If, what? If he cheated, then it's not reputable. I don't get it. No, so I watched the video of the some sort of a dude at Guinness World Records said that they did their own investigation and found that the hardware or the software neither was tampered with. But Twin Galaxies or Twin Peaks, whatever the fucking that shop is called, they still have not reinstated his record. They're still holding that. Uh, sticking Who the fuck is? The, the, <laughs> the Guinness record that people care about. Who the fuck's Twin Galaxies? Yeah, well, the Guinness genuinely who cares? The Guinness the, committee. The Guinness committee is super fucking corrupt. They only care about like what's best for sales. Obviously, I mean they're they're business well, first yeah, they're and business. foremost. So, I mean, I wouldn't take their investigation super seriously. They probably um, just looked at, well, do people like Billy? Doesn't matter if you don't. The world does. How, how would this possibly Guinness? Are you fucking kidding me? help their sales? Who cares about Pac-Man uh, victories? Well, Billy Mitchell will buy a book now. Yeah, I, which is more than like most people. I guess they just made 20 bucks off of Billy Mitchell then. <laughs> <laughs> That's about all they make on that book anymore. Give me a second, I'm looking I for the video. I used to love video. those books. Are you kidding me? Everybody yeah. used to love those books, but they've really fallen so what, out what of grace. So what are you saying? I'm sure, like, kids who do read still uh, would still enjoy them, just as we Jackson, did. Jackson, the whole the fucking Guinness website has, like, hey, here's some records you can break that no one gives a fuck about. No one respects yeah, Guinness. Charlie, you're not their target audience at 26 years of age. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... So I'm sorry to say that. Neither is Donkey <laughs> Kong. Like, who cares about Donkey Kong from the 80s for kids, you know? Ah, uh, excuse you. Uh, Hang on. Okay, let me Billy play Mitchell this real does. quick for us. Um, let me know if you 
don't hear it. This Billy is the Mitchell Guinness, has whatever. made various appearances in the Guinness World Records books since the 1980s, but in 2018, some questions were raised about the technical aspects of his gameplay, and we therefore took the decision to disqualify his records. Mitchell then appealed that decision, and we subsequently reopened his case and re-examined the evidence. This involved mm -hmm. reviewing both the existing evidence and newly sourced eyewitness testimony, plus some new expert <laughs> gameplay analyses and hardware verification. It's like a court case. In the end, we found <laughs> more that there wasn't Jackson sufficient Guinness. evidence to support the disqualification across the board. In cases such as this, where there is debate, we would typically defer to the... All right, so insufficient evidence, yada, yada, blah, blah, blah. Hang him. Oh, wait, it has testimony from Billy Mitchell himself. He can't be tried himself. for double jeopardy now. So that means if he ever does commit another crime, <laughs> it's... Another it cheat. be tried. Let's see what yeah, he has to say. It'll stand. Billy Mitchell, video game player of the century. I'm here today to celebrate Guinness World Records' unanimous decision this is to Billy reinstate Mitchell? all mm -hmm. of my Didn't world records Didn't you hear him introduce himself? He gave his full title, Video Game Player of the day. Century. To put it into historical perspective, all right, well, that eh, it's kind of a long video. I don't want to play it all, but there you go. So I well, why'd guess, you start it then? I just wanted to hear the what the Guinness World Record chump had to say. Right. So he has been reinstated, though. That's good. But again, that's not good. He cheated, Jackson. Oh, it's not good. <laughs> I don't think it's good. <laughs> you don't know that. Not legally, I guess. I, I guess he can't Guinness, legally Guinness say says that. it's he's fine, so he's fine in my books. The, the evidence to point to his cheating is overwhelming, I would say, though. Oh, is it like the evidence I pointed to you <laughs> cheating, Charlie? Cheating your way through one of the best games of the century? I can't. I wouldn't say cheating. I'm using the accessibility options, Kaya. Yeah. They weren't meant for you. They were meant for <laughs> game journalists, and for the moist meter, that counts. Yeah, we make fun of them. You're so. appropriating accessibility. That's kind of fucked up. Just play the game. Oh, fuck it. Now you need to play it again. Yeah, all right, no, no response wait, then. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. Were you, were you going to say something, Charlie? Do you want to answer that? Do I, wanna, I said I'll pass on playing it again. What do you mean? Say something to what? Okay. I was the one who talked last. <laughs> 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 all okay, let's see what else we have today. Um... Well, no, I, I want to get to the bottom of the Philly Mitchell thing. Why, oh, okay. why was this even brought up? Because he was reinstated? Yeah, it's a big deal. Yeah, we were talking about cheating. Well, then why? Oh, right, that's how it tied into it. Gotcha, gotcha. Why, all so of a sudden you care initially... about segues in this shit show? <laughs> no, I, well, yeah, kind of. But also, no, I was just curious. Um, but how did he tamper with the machines? Is, is that what caused the cheating? Because that seems like a pretty obvious... Uh, thing to pick up on. Um, right? I mean, it's the not, Guinness World Records editor-in-chief Craig Glenday in a video announcing decision said, in cases such as this where there is debate, we would typically defer to the original contemporaneous education. And this is the case here. He's just throwing in random big words to confuse people like me. <laughs> I wish I could play Abby and kick his ass. Um... While the cheating claim was originally supported by Twin Galaxies' current CEO, Jace Hall, Twin Galaxies' founder, Twin Walter... Twin Galaxies has a CEO? Yeah. What, what is... I thought it was just a forum. No, it is. Well, I mean, even still, someone has to run those forums, right? Yeah, like a webmaster, not a CEO. Yeah, who's going to call himself the webmaster? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, okay. That's what forum masters are called, right? No, you know, technically that we are call CEOs, call CEOs of this podcast, Jackson. They can call themselves whatever the fuck they yeah, want. Yeah, but I wouldn't so call I. myself a CEO. Why not? That sounds so much cooler. Yeah. No, it doesn't. It sounds like you're fucking overcompensating for something. Only to you, Do Jackson. Who's that what you are? You're a it fucking cool to everyone else. Forum user with 20,000 upvotes. Uh, whatever, bro. pretty awesome, though? I'll, I'll put that on my business card any day of the week. Twin Galaxies founder Walter Day spoke in favor of Mitchell's record being achieved legitimately. Day releasing his own statements. Da, da, da. So... What, did everyone in this Twin Galaxies community release statements <laughs> condemning <laughs> Billy Mitchell? They came to the conclusion that, that based on the evidence and based on my testimony to reinstate Billy Mitchell's scores, I'm confused. 
I saw a video of some YouTuber pretty much very well dissecting this supposed cheat, alleged cheat now. So he didn't cheat. There's a lot of know. evidence to point to the fact that he may have tampered with it. Yeah, they they claim it was on an emulator, Jackson. There's mountains of evidence. This is well, that's pretty obvious if he's using an emulator, right? That he that's a different software. Like the, there would be evidence of him using that. Surely, like, did he have to go somewhere to to perform this uh, miracle of gaming, this feat? I don't remember actually. Or, or was did he just send a recording of him doing it? I think it was a recording. Yeah, he sent a recording oh, as well, people bullshit. noticed that there was like cuts in the editing and that, you know, the software he was using was an emulator, but... Okay, well that's bullshit. Yeah, so how did it get reinstated then? Because I'm not it looking... needed something. He re-uploaded the video. <laughs> yeah, okay, but you guys may, are making it sound like a fucking conspiracy, like this fucking O.J. Simpson trial case here, like, oh, he's so obviously <laughs> guilty of this one, they're letting no, him it's walk. more important than O.J. <laughs> this is gaming. Well, if the glove fits... Oh, it says, Mitchell originally appealed Guinness World Records' decision, submitted further evidence, and recreated his Pac-Man score in 2019. So he did it again. Under supervision, I assume. So he's just addicted to it. So is he even good at, uh, what is it, Pac-Man? He has a record, Donkey Jackson. Kong. <laughs> what is <laughs> yeah, but under under duress or under influence of cheats, it's so is he even good? Oh, like you, without the cheats, I don't, you can challenge him to a one v one if you want. I don't know. Yeah. Well, what's even the game that he plays? <laughs> tell him, <laughs> it's Donkey Kong. Tell it's him to turn Kong off accessibility Kong. options. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe that's what it is. He just turned on a bunch of those modes. <laughs> Jumping makes you invincible. <laughs> the Pac Man is invisible when it's prone. Yeah. Well, I hope he uh, I hope he does get his records back if he earned them. If not, then he does not deserve them. That's my controversial Whoa, opinion. Oh, wow, Jackson. I, taking a hard I'm stance. Taking a, I'm taking a hard stance here, firmly in the middle of not caring about Billy Mitchell. <laughs> I think there's <laughs> only a very few people who actually care about a Donkey Kong record integrity. It's still just... Do you think he's... Do you think he's ever gotten laid based off of his oh Donkey Kong reputation? Oh my god, yes. yes. Absolutely, Jackson. Arcades used to Are be huge. Sure? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Fuck yeah. He's not a... Is he married? So, to begin with, he's not a bad-looking person. It's not like he's no, a gigantic, all. fat, pimply-faced nerd or something. He's He kind of just has that old-timey... It's like almost a half mullet. He has long hair. Yeah, but, he's a decent-looking guy, and he always gives a thumbs up, too. It's like reassuring. <laughs> is, is that, does that get you laid? Is this a secret I didn't know about? <laughs> Giving thumbs up to well, girls? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the more thumbs up you get. I the tell you, but it's kind of cool. Oh, yeah, that's like, him? Okay, well, you're... Oh, yeah, I've crazy. seen him. Yeah, like, if he shaved oh, his he head, old. though... One of our patrons posted a, uh, let's say, unflattering shot of him, but if he shaved his long hair and acted his age, he, he wouldn't be an ugly person, an ugly man. He's not even an ugly person while he's still pretending to be young. He's still decent looking. He seems sociable. Uh, he's a bit narcissistic. But other than that, I mean, he seems fine. But he but he's a cheater. Yeah. Well, aside and, from allegedly his in Donkey Kong, allegedly. I mean, that's pretty fucked up. Both have I been reinstated, Jackson. Allegedly, don't fucking get a suit. By the way, Jackson, I don't know if he has a Twitter I, or anything. I, I'd love to get him on this show. Uh, he has Billy a Mitchell, Twitch, I saw wanna... him stream once. Hmm? He has a Twitch, I've seen him stream. You could probably reach out to I will, him. I will take a hard stance, Billy Mitchell. If you come on this show, I'm leaving. I won't be on that episode. <laughs> I refuse. Why? <laughs> He'll be too bored of Donkey Kong talk. <laughs> I'm sickened by his crimes. <laughs> crimes against humanity. Jackson Dog. himself isn't above cheating in video games, though. I know that for a what? fact. What? What game? Uh -huh. Do you have video proof? I, I have... Uh, I have I have some proof, Jackson. You and I both partook in some uh, some particular cheats in preparation for something not too long ago. If you catch my no. drift. Uh, yeah, I'll stay quiet. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. uh, I, I've got somewhere to be. Let's cut the episode short. No, no, no. I want this no, exposed I, now. I would, Who cheated when and where? I, we, 
I, I don't believe we can say for the safety of our loved ones. <laughs> what does that mean? We committed a crime, a virtual crime, Kaya. Oh. You wouldn't understand. We, did you cheat we will on tell you after online the... game? No. What? No. No, no, no. no, no so... I will literally lose everything I care about. <laughs> All your Legos? What? <laughs> He's getting close, Jackson. Stop him. <laughs> no, I, I, I didn't put the Lego together with, uh, like, a brick assist on. <laughs> I, I, uh, I cheated in Lego Star Wars. I used an invincibility cheat. Yeah, that's what it was. That's what we did. That's what we you did, Jackson. Like the I still, I still feel dirty. That, like the... The newly made couple that's like just hooking up, you know, in public, but, you know, they're trying to be coy about it in front of everyone. Like, hee hee hee, oh, you guys will never guess where we've just been. <laughs> oh, no, no, we can't tell you. <laughs> You're such a dick. <laughs> Speaking of dick, though, let's talk about Manscaped. Grooming and how important mm -hmm. it is. I actually just recently Manscaped, boys. I'd been letting, tell me. Yeah, I've been letting my uh, pubic hair get a little out of control, so I took care of that. They have the best tools for it. There's that very, very comforting feeling you get when using Manscaped because you know even if you're totally fucking inept when it comes to grooming, you won't hurt yourself by making mistakes because all of their tools have very, very idiot-proof guards in place where you're not just going to like cut your dick off or you know draw blood or something because you messed up or you went the wrong way against the grain or something like that mm -hmm. it gets everything clean shaven smooth as a baby's ass it is fantastic and uh i haven't even hurt myself with it yet which to me is the biggest benefit and they also have more <laughs> tools than that you have the weed whacker for ear hair nose hair if you have a problem in those two departments very effective in that regard as well jackson take it home uh, yeah, so you can get 20% off and free shipping with the code official at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code official. Make playing with your balls the best part of your day. Thanks to Manscaped for uh, sponsoring us. We appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Shave it, get comfy, and then get in your meandies. We, we appreciate you keeping Perfect. Charlie's junk yeah. clean as a, as a whistle. Clean as a whistle mm -hmm. and comfy today. Hey, Amen. Remember when, uh, this is an old school reference for those who have been listening for three plus years, but uh, one of my favorite memories of the podcast is when Charlie lost us a sponsor by <laughs> referring to a company's product as Dr. T Dr. Plutonium's Whoa, ball you, sack cream or something. What are you talking about? That was all of us. Well, yeah, we also didn't lose them, by the way, but yeah, they, we... That was all you. We were, you lost us money. We were all joking about it. it we was got spent. <laughs> Yeah, it was. What was it? Doctor Carver's shave butter, and we just kept changing yeah. the doctor. So it was Doctor <laughs> Plutonium's ass cream and shit. <laughs> doctor, so yeah, that was fun. Well, we stayed. Yeah, fuck. Whatever. We didn't lose them. They just kind of yeah. told us to please like, not. Yeah, we're, not. We're just on a we're just on a break at the moment. That's all it is. <laughs> they just asked us politely, "Hey, can you at least just kind of get the name right and stop insulting, <laughs> making it seem like you're insulting it?" <laughs> Can you tell them what that product is actually called? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we had some we good the free marketing advice. We had some good names though. I only remember Doctor Plutonium, but we had a few. Ah, I wish I could remember them now though. I don't know. It was Doctor Plutonium and Doctor Manhattan. Doctor Manhattan was another one. Yeah. Mm. Well, that's just plagiarism. <laughs> that's not unique. Whatever. I don't like that one. Get Dr. Plutonium's Manscaped Razor at manscaped.com slash official. Now they're going to be mad. Yeah, something about that title, Dr. Plutonium, man, ruffles those feathers. Those corporate feathers. Oh, the official podcast has reached another milestone. We have just successfully cancelled Aunt Jemima. I remember we talked about this briefly on a bonus. Yeah, it's crazy. Aunt Jemima. Oh. Was it a bonus? Did we? I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah I, do, I do distinctly remember talking about it. We talked like, about where did it the like come from. For, we had that whole discussion. Yeah, Charlie, remember where we weren't sure who, who is Aunt Jemima and where did she come from and who, yeah. like who plays Aunt Jemima? <laughs> where did she originate? I, I vaguely remember us talking about that. I know Aunt Jemima's name has been changed now. Yeah. To what? So 
This is from know, NBC News. Aunt Jemima Brandt to change name, remove image that Quaker says is based on racial stereotype. As we said, so you're welcome, world. We've just made the world less racist, I guess. The official podcast. Yeah. We're taking full credit for this. We defeated racism today or last week yeah. on a bonus. Um, we you can you can thank us by supporting us on Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> Patreon.com slash the official podcast. <laughs> one new patron is one new person standing up to racism. <laughs> I'll eat one. You better, you better support, otherwise racism might come back. <laughs> we haven't locked it away forever. <laughs> <laughs> Pay me or else, or else you're racist. There's so many more racial stereotype whatever that we have to remove you guys like the coco puffs monkey um what's his name what the fuck are you talking uh, about coco co- you mean coco the coco puffs, puffs monkey yeah you don't yeah, wait you don't know what coco puffs is Charlie? i know what coco puffs are but i thought it was a bird it is a bird it's is not it a, a fucking monkey which one yeah. is the monkey wait, no it, I, I no i'm oh, with it's you, coco Kai. crispies it's a monkey over here coco crispies no, Charlie. it's a monkey over here Cocoa, Cocoa Pops. Cocoa oh, Pops, yeah. Cocoa Krispies is totally different. Yeah, yeah. Cocoa, because yeah. Cocoa Puffs is the bird. Yeah, I don't I don't think I've ever oh, seen... Oh, yeah, it's Cocoa Pops, right. I've never had Cocoa, whatever the bird one is. I don't think I've ever even seen Cocoa Krispies. Well, in the, in the no, vein of Pops. us okay. vaguely mentioning something on the show and it then getting cancelled like weeks later and us taking credit for it, I will now officially call out Cocoa Krispies. That is racist. You will remove it, and you will go to patreon.com slash the official podcast <laughs> and make amends. And make a sizable donation <laughs> to, I'll, I'll, Coco to our cause. Since we're, since we're staying in this ballpark here, I'll, I'll do one as well. I'm calling okay. out Lucky Charms. I think, it's, I think it's a little fucked up that they're using a leprechaun to sell their product like that. It's a bit stereotypical. Yeah, what's up with that? Yeah, I think that's just going a little too far. Yeah, aren't leprechauns like, isn't that a racial stereotype for ginger people? Leprechaun. I'm not sure. I'll agree just because no, it would further my idea that this is racist somehow. They're small. They're, it's so small people, right? Like leprechauns are small. They're tiny. Yeah. Midgets. Ginger midgets. Yeah. Who also deserve racial equality. So Lucky Charms, you've also been put on notice. Uh, we have a $5 tier <laughs> to which you may donate. Also still the $50,000 poster. <laughs> if you really want if to you're really feeling yourself. guilty. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> also for the low price of $5,000, I'll come to your home, eat Lucky Charms and Cocoa Krispies <laughs> and tell you you're racist against Turkish people somehow. Yeah. I, I want to contribute here, but the only cereal i ever eat is like uh sultana brand or whatever it's called and it's nothing what? really racist about that is there no what is a sultana it's, brand it's raisin brand yeah, no, Sult- yeah raisin brand oh yeah hmm. could we somehow is there a way to cancel tony the tiger whoa whoa, whoa, whoa. that's a little what far. did he do yeah that's a little far he's a furry Alright, yeah. yeah, good point. Like, Take like him down. Pedophile adjacent. Take him out. I think it's weird. Well, it's not weird. I understand why they're doing it now, but Aunt Jemima has been like a racist thing for like a hundred years, and now all of a sudden they decide to take care of it. It's something they should have done a long time take ago. Take care of it? <laughs> they're actually well, taking Aunt Jemima out back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Aunt Jemima. The <laughs> time's <it>. come. <laughs> Well, in my opinion, the races will never be equal until we remove all black people from all products. Only white faces. Mm-hmm. That'll make sure that, you know, everyone's represented. Well, wait, are, are, they, re- are they replacing... Because I can see how, obviously, Aunt Jemima would be a, a racist caricature designed by white people, perhaps. But, like, are they replacing it with another black woman? Or, like, another black figure or something? How would that work and not be racist still? Unless it's like Halle Berry. I, 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 they should get know. Halle Berry. There's my free advice to Quaker Foods or whatever the fuck that company's called. Get Halle Berry on that. Oh, well, not to not to steer too far, but I looked up the Aunt Jemima thing and I didn't know this. Apparently Uncle Ben is also a racist thing as well. I didn't know that. I thought Uncle Ben was actually started by a guy named Ben. That's a shame. I fucking love Uncle Ben's rice. What did why, Uncle so why ben did they do? name them after... 
Uh, apparently, Uncle Ben is also... Wasn't he in Spider-Man? <laughs> Isn't that a Spider-Man character? <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. A, <laughs> where is Uncle Ben? Uncle Ben, Uncle ben responsibility. <laughs> 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 he didn't say racist to me. <laughs> well, I, he, <laughs> Uncle Ben's race didn't seem racist to me, but I guess I don't know its history. Apparently, it was uh, born in like some racist, like racist marketing schemes or something. <laughs> so what, he's what, also the first the result behind this. Just when I type in Uncle Ben, I can't even find anything about the rice. Really? Well, I guess maybe my shit's kind of tainted, because when I type in Uncle Ben, all I get is the rice. Uh, so wait, was it food specifically designed in that period f for, like, the black population or for black people? I I'm, I'm confused what the, like, the marketing idea behind it is. That's a good question. Like, how come these, like, universally accepted as very tasty foods have black mascots? That, that are made up, I mean. Like, I could understand if that's the actual person who made the recipe or ingredient, but why did someone in, like, a lab come up with this person to use as in a, a lab? <laughs> like a lab coat, they created Uncle Ben and extra mind. <laughs> the racist <laughs> laboratory. <laughs> <laughs> racist scientists. Uh... This is, yeah, I, I'm not even really seeing too much about Uncle Ben's history here. It's just the uh, Quaker and Pepsi. They just completely wiped him out from history. Yeah. He's just gone. So, like, literally four days ago, Quaker and Pepsi said, you know, after Aunt Jemima, we're going to be changing Uncle Ben as well. What the fuck does Pepsi have to do with it? They own, I mean, Pepsi owns so much. They own Quaker. Oh, are, are they? they? Oh, God. So Pepsi is racist. Yeah. Well, we knew that. I, that's just because you don't like Pepsi, Jackson. Yeah, Coke, Coke's better. Coke's for the uh, yeah, oh my people God. who don't like racism. So in the 1910s, the German-British scientist and chemist Erich Hutzenlaub and the British scientist and chemist F Francis Heron Rogers invented a form of perboiling design designed to retain more of the nutrients in rice, now known as the Hutzenlaub process. So it was a, it was a German in the Nazi era that came up with Uncle Ben's. Well, that's upsetting to learn, I guess. Shit. It doesn't sound like racism is the issue here. <laughs> Sounds like it was uh, something else. I'm trying to... Uh, but also the racism. Oh, okay. So according to Mars, which apparently now owns Uncle Ben's, according to Mars, Uncle Ben was an African-American rice grower known for the quality of his rice. What's wrong with that? So they... Wait, did he know that he was being used as a marketing gimmick? Well, like maybe they... I don't think... Adopted... Hmm a popular black dude I didn't, for their own marketing. I didn't see any of that. So I was looking up Uncle Ben and it seems like they did just make him up. I feel like there's no history about him being a, a rice grower or anything. And then there's oh, I'm just in on 2007. Wikipedia. Yeah. Oh, wait, where? I'll pull up Wikipedia. Um, I'm on Wikipedia, the marketing section. Since 1946, Uncle Ben's products have carried the image mm -hmm. of an elderly African-American man dressed in a bow tie, which is said to have been based on a Chicago... Maitre d'Hotel, I don't know what that word means, named Maitre Frank D. Brown. It's like a waiter mm. or a host. So not even Ben. So, so, wait, wait, so it is based off a real person? I guess, maybe. I I don't know. This... But he didn't have, he didn't know, like, he, he his identity was just co-opted by a brand for honestly, their marketing? So I'm guessing that some Don Draper type dude was just sitting at a bar and he saw some black waiter and he was like, you know, he looks kind of, he looks like he makes good rice. I'm going to put him on the box and present this at the next board right, meeting. Well then, yeah, it's, it's definitely it, racist then. Oh. Hell, if it gets us even one more patron, hell yeah, it's racist. Fuck you, Uncle Ben. Um, you're cancelled. This is this is really kind of fucking weird, though. What is the point? If you're going to make up a mascot, why make up, like, a human mascot? Like, hey, look, it's <laughs> Sally Sidney's uh, butternut cream. Well, that, that's, what, that's what I was thinking. Maybe it was, like, a, it was designed to appeal to, like, the black population in America. Like, they, they thought they had an untapped audience there. Well, perhaps. okay, so, so who's, marketed it, who's Mr. Like, Clean supposed to appeal to? The big, pale, bald, white man. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a dumb mascot. No, the women sexually attracted to him. 
<laughs> it doesn't make sense. It would make well, more wait, sense wait, to put on wait. like Jason Statham on what your Mister Clean. Mm. Yeah, I don't get. Bre- I don't get anything about this. It's all very odd. Yeah, it I can understand sense. putting a monkey on uh, cocoa pops or whatever. I can understand that from a like because the, the little cocoa pops look like monkey shit. So that makes sense. <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you talking about? What? You just made a pretty <laughs> big leap here. <laughs> I can I can understand I can understand their brand kind of significance. I can no, understand. No, this. we're not glancing over this. Are, are you confusing monkeys with rabbits, Jackson? Well, what what, what does monkey shit look like? Oh wait, human shit. Like logs. Regular shit. <laughs> <laughs> they're not. They're not like goats. <laughs> They don't poop pebbles, Jackson. Are you, are you sure my cereals are lying to me then? What? Is that what they say? What does in the that box? mean? It looks just like monkey <laughs> were you shit. Eating, were you eating Cocoa <laughs> Krispies <laughs> hoping <laughs> that this oh, just looks just like monkey shit? Mmm. <laughs> oh, yeehaw, I can taste it with every bite. The, the box art is the monkey like spreading his anus and shitting into the bowl. <laughs> 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 Okay, well, that's nah, I, I could, not true. Oh, well, yeah. Um, let me see. Somebody in our patron chat linked this. Was Tony the Tiger driven off Twitter by unbelievably horny furries? <laughs> yeah, I saw I remember this. That. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> well, what, wanna pray tell? Uh, Charlie, take it. Uh, I think I remember for the most part. They tried to do like what a lot of people are doing in the industry there, like with Wendy's, where they put like a public facing face with like, uh, you know, very savvy memes and shit on Twitter. They tried that with Tony the Tiger. Like, hey, it's me, Tony the Tiger. I'm on Twitter now. Isn't that cool? It's great. Mm. And then like all these furries in the comments started getting really sexual with Tony the Tiger. And then he just stopped posting. <laughs> <laughs> they scared of Tony the Tiger <laughs> off the internet. Yeah. What the fuck? Why? What? So this is from the verified account from Frosted Flakes. It says, "I'm all for showing your stripes, feathers, etc. But let's keep things g- 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 great and family friendly, if you could. Cups could be watching." This is uncomfortable to read. Yes. Uh, is yes, he? It is. Is he telling his fans not to, like, post dick pics in the comments? Yeah, kind of, well, like, posting Rule 34 of Tony the Tiger. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you, you click on, like, a brand awareness post of, like, hey, we're offering Tony the Tiger plushies or whatever, and then you scroll down, there's pictures of Tony the Tiger's cock. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the cons. <laughs> so I, can, I can understand the issue at real Tony Tiger give me dick <laughs> <laughs> it's someone's fucking fursuit mask say I'll be a good cub uh. <laughs> I would have loved for it to get so bad where like the owner of Tony the Tiger or whatever, like the CEO has to log on to Twitter and post an update to say we put Tony the Tiger back in his cage. Yeah. Well, we, do, we don't feel safe interacting with you fucks. It, Some kind of it sounds like, comment from an actual adult. It sounds like that is what literally happened here, Jackson. They his account is deleted. Well no, they still did they still did it in like the personality of Tony the Tiger. We know we know, you know Tony I mean? wasn't a fan of his more adult oriented followers. In two thousand sixteen he started blocking a accounts for their lusty replies when the furries revolted the account made what seems to be the only acknowledgement it's ever made of tony the tiger's incredibly horny fan base <laughs> oh at some points the account disappeared that your url now leads to an error page yeah holy shit furries literally drove tony the tiger off twitter holy fuck yeah. they drove him to suicide it's fucking scary they were super horny have we seen Tony the Tiger recently? <laughs> no, I haven't even heard of him. Is he is he still on the boxes, no, or did they? Is he too scared to he's appear just on the boxes? Disappeared too? from all the boxes. <laughs> They've got him in witness protection now. <laughs> <laughs> he's still on the boxes. It's just been replaced with Rule Thirty Four out of the boxes as well. Yeah, that'd be pretty bold. <laughs> A tiger cock staring at you in the grocery <laughs> aisle. <laughs> Yuck. 
I would have. It would have been fucking amazing if they actually leaned into it though and started posting like. Uh, like they made like a Tony the Tiger flashlight or something, and they offered that. If if they were smart businessmen, that's what they should have done. They should this have heavily is, leaned into it, pivoted. This is an oldie here. Um, it's from Gawker. They got DDT'd by Hulk Hogan a couple of years back. But this article is called "Tony the Tiger Can't Tweet Without Furries Begging Him for Sex." <laughs> and one of the <laughs> replies: is, "Can we get a nude for all the furries out there at Real Tony Tiger?" <laughs> I hope I get spanked by Tony. I hope Tony ties me up. It's nothing but furries in his replies. This sucks. God, God I would that be upset sucks, if man. I tweeted something. It was nothing but these absolute deviants just having a giggle at my expense, just fucking trying to fuck a mascot. Poor Tony. Yeah, you gotta feel bad for him. Yeah, well, he's dead now. Rest in peace along with Aunt Jemima and Uncle Ben. Just in a mass grave at the back of PepsiCo or whatever? Yeah, I think PepsiCo actually owns all the cereal, so that actually is probably where All the racist cereal. <laughs> <laughs> they've, they've capitalized on it. Do they have one fucking Arkham they have Asylum? They the market cornered. They have one racist lab <laughs> to come up with all the terrible uh, mascots, just blacks and furries to get fucked what is it so pepsico owns all of the cereal and cola owns all of the drinks basically right i think well, so yeah no no i don't think so pepsi still owns drinks as well they're still heavily pepsi owns now. pepsi no, but i'm like pretty Coke sure though. if you no they also own sprite no no, no. <clears throat> sprite is cola i'm pretty jackson if you grab literally any drink these days and turn it around and look see. at the label it says coca-cola company yeah, I know, but I'm sure Pepsi still has their equivalents. Yeah, but like they pretty much compete head for head. Pepsi is on no, its they knees, man. They, just, drinks. they lost like three fifths of their mascots today. Hmm. Man, it is crazy Whoa. the amount of fucking brands Coke owns, though. It is nuts. I thought, does Coke own more than Pepsi? Oh, God, yeah. Well, actually, it might yeah. be kind of close. Let me see. Yeah, I thought it, I thought last I saw it was pretty close. No. I don't even know how Pepsi has this much money. Like, I don't know where the fuck they're getting this money from. People buy Pepsi. Did, I one assume. of the craziest promotions I've ever seen is when they did that thing back in like early two thousand when they actually offered to give away a, like a fighter jet to a consumer. Yes, really. They, what was it? If if they got the correct lid or something, what was it? No, it, like, so what was the offer? It was an impossible task, I believe. So what? The, oh, it was. Yeah, it, well, it was supposed to be, but somebody did it. If I remember right, it was supposed to be like collect a million of something, but they never made a million of it or some shit like that. And then somebody actually did figure out a way to do it, and they couldn't give the fighter jet or some shit. Is this right? So what did they have to? Do? Pepsi. So not to interrupt, but Pepsi is worth twice of what Coke is worth. I can't, I honestly can't believe that. I'm on, hang on, I'll just put it in our chat here. It's gobankingrates.com. It says 2018 oh, profits yes. for Pepsi were 12.5 billion and for Coke it was 6.4 billion. I'm having a hard time believing this too. Wait, so wait, what, isn't there a difference between profit and like how much the company actually earned? That That's profit, how much they actually earn after taxes and everything. Mm. That's what they make, which is. Yeah, I'm just having an issue actually believing that Coca Cola earned what is this the oh. amount Pepsi did. Oh, okay, Pepsi. so. No, Go ahead. I was just going to say before we get too deep away from this. So, Jackson, I found it. It was in 1996. Pepsi mm -hmm. was offering a Harrier jet for 7 million yeah, Pepsi yeah, points. Yeah. And then there was a 21-year-old business student who calculated he'd need 700 grand to buy enough Pepsi points to get the jet. So he convinced five investors to get 700k, which he did, and Pepsi didn't give him the Harrier jet, so he sued. I mean, that's pretty fucking smart. It is really I mean, smart. They would have had to either settle out of court, obviously, or pay the amount for the Harrier jet, like an equal... Yeah, so did he win? Amount, or right? what happened? <clears throat> well, he would have had to. I'm still well no, they they did not give him the Harrier jet because they said the commercial was just a joke. 
Like the oh, Harrier jet was supposed to be a joke. You. Fuck you, Pepsi. But surely they they would have still had to have settled something. Yeah, they'd have to, right? But I don't see anything about the settlement. I want to read Maybe this. How Pepsi became public. the sixth largest military in the world. Whoa. Uh, in 1959, then President Dwight Eisenhower wanted to bring our America culture to citizens of the Soviet Union. Boring. How's Pepsi military? I want to know that. Years later, the people of the Soviet well, if it's Union... anything like KFC, they probably just give the military Pepsi instead of, like, sponsored the military. So the cl oh, so the Soviet Union apparently decided to buy Pepsi using a universal currency, vodka. In the late 1980s, Russia's initial agreement to serve Pepsi in their country was about to expire, but this time their vodka wasn't going to be enough to cover the cost. <laughs> it's pretty cool. So you guys were trading drinks. It's You were giving them big sugary... High corn fructose syrup, uh, syrup, whatever the fuck it's called, and they were giving you vodka. Sort of a peace treaty. I can't fucking stand Pepsi. Man, this makes me sad. So I found the, the court ruling. It was decided by Judge Kimball Wood that no sane person could have believed the company would intend to convey a jet worth 23 million for 700 grand. It was mere puffery. And that there was no such instance of fraud. So, oh, unfortunately... Isn't it, isn't it false advertising, though? Well, yeah. The, the, so, he continued, he argued, it was just there for jest, it was not meant to be taken seriously, and no sane person could have taken it seriously enough to believe they'd actually get the jet, so he wasn't awarded any money, and uh, the case was closed. But, Assholes. wait, there's tangible proof that several people did bill it like they were fool enough to believe it like he had investors on board isn't that evidence that maybe the general public would believe that it's possible i think he should have gotten something offer? because you know at at the very least they did put a actual price on it whether it was a joke or not there was a price there and he hit that yeah. like i think he should have at least gotten some at least, at the least pepsi could have done is just paid back the investors the, the amount or whatever yeah it's just <laughs> so that this guy is, doesn't owe seven hundred thousand dollars to investors <laughs> that's true because they did spend 700 grand for these pepsi points that's yeah, pretty fucking kind of a dick move. retarded i mean you'd think that this would be one of those cases where it sets a precedent that companies can't just say whatever the fuck they want on that note, if you yeah. become a patron today, you have a chance to win a stealth bomber worth... How much are they worth, guys? I think like... Uh, two, 50 million? 200 million, probably. Stealth yeah, we'll figure it out bomber later. Price. No, let's, let's just make the promise now, who cares? Yeah, two, you'll win 2 billion pounds worth of uh, gold. If you become a patron yeah, with today. with a $50,000 composter inside. We really need to get rid of that poster. <laughs> That's a bonus. That's just, what an interesting case. Uh, afterwards, they continued to air the commercial, but upped it from 7 million to 700 million points and then added, just kidding, just to be safe. <laughs> Assholes. <Yeah. laughs> I'm just kidding too, by the way. You're not getting 2 billion in gold. Um... All right, you guys want to wrap it up? Yep, I would need to yeah. take a piss. We can wrap. <laughs> Okey doke. Do, uh, do you want to do another little ad for our Patreon? We've done it two times already, but why not a third? Well, we have a Patreon, if you haven't heard yet. In case, you know, if we haven't brought it up, what, ten times this episode? Might not be enough. Go to patreon.com slash the official podcast. We do bonuses. We have one coming up tomorrow, in fact, and we do them live. You can tune in live if you feel like it. If we have a chat. You get access to all of the chat archives in our... Uh, Patreon Discord, so if we dump links in there where people share images or their memes or, you know, just it's just a chat. It's an archive. You can follow along. Two bonus episodes, usually a month. Yeah, patreon.com slash the official podcast. Mm -hmm. Check us out. All right. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next week. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Cancel Lucky Charms. <laughs>